Hey guys, Tater here with my artist Gary. We love Photoshop, we use it for almost anything involving digital media including game dev, video editing and motion graphics. But as CS6 costs a lot of money and some people may not be able to afford Creative Cloud, although $24 a month sounds fair to me, we decided to share some photo manipulation alternatives that we have found over the years. I'll be including some free and paid software so we get a nice range for people to choose from and to take a look at some cool stuff as well. The first is obviously GIMP. If you have been searching around for a free version of Photoshop, no doubt you've come across GIMP before. The software itself doesn't sway too far from the purposes of Photoshop. It's an all-round bit of software and we would recommend it to anyone wanting to take advantage. The GUI isn't as friendly as Photoshop, but due to its price, it's actually one of the most user-friendly bits of freeware out there. I was surprised to see such an easy navigation and really glad that I gave it a try. The learning curve is somewhat steep if you are not moving in from Photoshop but at the same time this is because Photoshop and GIMP share a lot of qualities. It's only difficult to learn if you are not familiar with photo manipulation software. I found the plugin registry to be useful when it was frequently updated but now I'm not too sure where to find plugins. It can get a bit buggy from time to time, but this is expected from developers who aren't earning anything from it. So I would highly recommend giving this a try. Moving on, we have Paint. No, not Microsoft Paint, Paint.net. This is slightly more user-friendly than the older version of Microsoft Paint. The purposes behind it were to replace the default software on Windows. In my opinion, it does a better job at photo manipulation than it does towards a more artistic side of digital media, basically using it for making your photography look better with post-production. This is just my opinion of course, but the brushes are somewhat limited and quite frankly I couldn't draw any way to save my life. It claims and delivers that the community is active and I checked the forums to find many posts just minutes before, so big thumbs up on an active community. Their forums contained everything from tutorials to competitions, so check them out if you have a chance. Both of the software just mentioned above are free and my favourite alternatives to Photoshop, but there are some more specific software that range from helping people who can't draw, yay, to really artistically made. First up is Hexels 2. If you are making games, boy oh boy will you love this software. It's a hexagonal based art style software for the artistically handicapped. I bought this for $40 under the assumption that it would make pixel art easier than Photoshop. And believe me, I was blown away. This software has a main function of creating pixel art with an extremely easy learning curve. Discovering the software was a lifesaver, not only did it help with the games I was making, but it had another function to make isometric artwork. I was using Magica Voxel at the time to create my isometric world, but this required the game being 3D. Hexels 2 basically took the game into 2D, severely saving the battery life of the mobile phones used in the games I made. Not only is this software great for game devs, but also logo and icon design. It offers more functions that allow a geometric style of artwork, but I am yet to test these out. The color palette is easy to use and learn, the layering system is similar to Photoshop but on top of all of this they handle animation perfectly. It allows overlay effects that can be used in animation and the software also has a lot of templates and examples to inspire you every time you open it up. Definitely a must have for any game devs out there. Next up we have Manga Studio. In the attempt to make artwork, although sucking at it big time, I came across Manga Studio at $50. There was no way I was going to pay for the software. Fortunately, the university had student copies and I was able to give it a try. In comparison to Photoshop, it actually works better when it comes to realistic brushes. The range of brushes are significantly more than default Photoshop and the realism these brushes portray is outstanding. The blending of colours and brush behaviour give a drawing on paper feel, covering everything from pencil sketches to watercolours to painting with charcoal. This is a must have for any artist looking to move into the digital realm. 
The software advertises itself to be used for comics and manga, but I can definitely see this being useful towards the concept art of games. Layering is similar to Photoshop, but they cater towards creating a comic book pamphlet. So it has story pages, bringing us to another use, which is storyboarding. If anybody is making a story based game, then this could come in handy. Big thumbs up to Manga Studio. Next up we have Coral Paint Shop. This is probably the most direct use of photo editing software available. Unfortunately it only really covers photo manipulation, but this is also important when looking to replace Photoshop. The paint shop makes photo manipulation easier than I've ever seen it before. It sells for $100 but you can probably get a student copy from your university. It has a large range of features including color grading and correction, but the differences are that this caters towards people who struggle to understand the inner workings of how color works. Basically a piece of software that understands your knowledge of vision and is flexible to both the novice and experts. Another key feature is how quickly you can get the job done. If you are creating a film or movie, this software can be handy to get reference to your color grading by using it on screenshots. If you are into game development, then you will understand how useful screen overlays are to get a cinematic feel. PaintShop can be used to create an LUT gradient. LUT in this case stands for Look Up Textures or Look Up Table, not Lower Urinary Tract Infection. These are color patterns or palettes that control colors on screen and can be used to amplify certain colors or diminish others, contrasting your whites and blacks to balance the final look you want. So although unnecessary, still a very useful piece of software if you struggle to understand color. Next up is Krita. This is a free piece of software used mainly by artists for conceptual art and texturing. The brushes are dynamic enough to suit everyone's needs and did I mention it's free? Alright I did, whoops. Although it doesn't necessarily improve your artwork, it does seem to make it easier for the artist to use, offering them a brush stabilizer for those who cannot keep a straight line and a drawing assistant ruler function. Similar to Lazy Nozomi, the ruler allows for an accurate perspective in your artwork, especially helpful if you are making anything man-made. Then of course the essentials like layers, selection and masks, but also PSD support in case you need more manipulation towards your image. From a texturing perspective, this seems to encourage a more stylized look into your game, not only through the promotional artwork, but hand drawn textures. Similar to Rhyme and Sea of Thieves, with brushes allowing the flexibility to choose your style. What better way to make a game look original than to have a hand drawn style textured on your models. All in all, a great piece of software for a great price. So that's all the software I have for you guys, I'm going to take a bit of time to talk about this channel. If this doesn't interest you then thank you for watching. If you're still here then thank you even more. I've got some amazing feedback involving the direction of this channel and frankly, I like it. People seem to like the image style so I'll be adding a lot more of it in but I'll also be keeping the drawing style that you will see in this video. People like the game related content and comparisons better so expect more of that as well. Views are really high due to frequent and consistent uploading, so I will be continuing this trend until I get more feedback. If you want any links to the software seen in this video, you can find them in the description. If you have any recommendations for this channel, you can contact me on Discord, link should be in the description below. On behalf of Gary and I, asparagus makes your urine smell bad, but urine also makes your asparagus smell bad. <laughs>